Good to see you, man. You too, man. Here we are in the jungle in New York City, a legendary spot. Alicia Keys and Swiss Beats, real estate and, and business and creativity all come together. They're just amazing, those two. And yeah. um, I love this space. You've spent time in here. You did, well, you, you worked with Jay on Magna Carta in here. Yeah, we, I was, uh, there's a lot that's happened in the studio. I mean, um, the Beyonce album, mm -hmm. uh, so I, I co-wrote some, some, some tunes on that. Uh, um, I mean, did you really have to start yeah. with that straight? Man, yeah, no. If anytime I can name drop Beyonce, I'm doing it. <laughs> We're like 40 seconds in. It's like I wrote songs for Beyonce. <laughs> yeah, this white boy. <laughs> no, um, um, and then yeah, really weirdly though, like Jay came in to do um to do a feature on 2020 Experience, and then three weeks later, Magna Carta was like done just because I think he was like hanging out and she had like 90 songs for that album and she was sort of just, you know, mm. going through a library of material to figure out what she wanted to do with mm -hmm. it. And yeah, we were in the studio adjacent to this one. That's where, I mean, he, we literally did Suit and Tie and Holy Grail within like two or three days. Was it the most fun tour you ever did, Legends? I had a blast. Mm -hmm. My favorite part was just like the moment where we were about to go on stage and Jay still was in the stadium and we were like, is he coming? <laughs> That's my favorite part. Uh, no, I'm kidding. No, actually my favorite part was like doing rehearsals uh, because we got there and he's, you know, I mean, he's obviously a genius at what he does, but the thing that I was so taken aback by after we spent that much time together and actually really became friends was we got to rehearsal and I, I pitched him all these ideas because my whole thing was, I said, you know, I feel like we have to put for that tour that this needs to feel like a block party, yeah. but the rules are you can only play the two of us. And luckily we share two very, you know, prolific producers, yeah. you know, that have worked on both of our stuff a lot, especially in the last two decades. Mm. And, um, and he just said to me, he's like, He's like, I don't know, man, you're the musician. You just put some stuff together and I'll just tell you if I think it sounds great. And I was like, great. Basically, he foisted. So I was a, I was a kid in a candy store I mean, because. you're happy, but to him, yeah. he's like, I'm foisting all musical direction on you right now. He foisted speak. me. He foisted He foisted you. me. <laughs> Shout out to Larry David. <laughs> um, so the reason we're sitting here, man, Man of the Woods. This new album, four and a half year gap. But first of all, I want to talk about some of the things that have been keeping you busy. Um, you've been having fun, you know, extending your your basic collaboration, working with Foo Fighters. That was a nice touch. <laughs> you and Dave Grohl in the room, I can imagine the four horsemen are close to manning up because it's like, that's the sing <laughs> signal, the two nicest men in music hanging out together. I just want you guys to be like with the doors closed and it's just the two of you just be like, everybody. We talked a lot of shit about people <laughs> for sure. There, there were about half a bottle of whiskey in the talking commenced. Yeah, that'll do it. Yeah. Um, what else did you do? You uh, reinvented the denim jacket, is that right, for Levi's? Uh, so a few <laughs> of them. Yeah, this is one of them, actually. It's nice. I like it a It's lot. good. Yeah. You had one of the biggest hits of the year, um, arguably the biggest, uh, last year with, um, you know, Can't Stop, huge moment. Um, when you're in the middle of that, because you've been in the middle of that a few times, mm. that very special alchemy of, Creativity and success, right? And mm. and do you appreciate it more when it's coming at you like that in a situation like that, and it's a standalone moment, and you're at that point in your life? Because it was a ridiculously big record. I mean, you couldn't escape it. Uh, not apologizing. <laughs> uh, you know, that one for me was a was actually a really really new experience, um, because it was the first time I feel like you know it was for a separate project, an animated film, and. Mm. You know, I probably wouldn't have been so gung ho about, you know, even being a voice character in the film if if I wouldn't have, you know, if, if me and my wife wouldn't have had a child. Mm. And so there was definitely the air of innocence and, you know, uh, uh, some sort of childlike feeling that that fueled that song. and. Can't stop the feeling was 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 interesting just because it it came from it was it was born out of trying to make something that I you know worked in the film and that you know my 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 son could listen to now yeah you know because a lot of my music I would not play for my son now yeah it, it, you know um, although I did play filthy for him and 
he's already got the haters gonna say it's fake lying down. He does. So that's pretty fresh. He, he literally to- said it to me the other day, but he was like, so wheel. And I was like, <laughs> man, when that R kicks in, like that, you're gonna be- You gotta really, record those moments, yeah. man. Re- because you only Will, f- Willie, Willie Fwesh, son. You only- <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, uh, and, fi- and finally, you wore that at Christmas, which is without doubt the greatest Christmas jumper I think I've ever seen in my life. You know who? You know who got bought me that for my uh, for Christmas? My mother. She's the best. What's yeah. your mom's name again? Lynn. Crazy. Yeah. Is she the funniest person? I can't, I literally kept saying it to my son. Ask your mom if I'm real. <laughs> Ask your mom. It's good. It's good. It's good material. It's terrible. All the greatest artists shed skin and move forward and shed skin, and mm-hmm. it, it doesn't change who you are, but you shed your skin. So. You know, you start out the new Mickey Mouse Club, you move into NSYNC. Who, quickly, who were you at that moment in time? Uh, uh, very competitive, extremely idealistic. Mm-hmm. Um, um, and yeah, a, I mean, a perfectionist. Um, then you move on, you make Justified, you step away, you shed your first real skin. Mm-hmm. You move into the studio with Neptunes, you know, start collaborating, doing your own thing. Who were you? I think that's the first time I felt like a young adult, like really. And like I could really express myself, so I was really open. Um, I was uh, ex- still extremely impressionable, mm-hmm. but trusted my instincts that I was around the right people to guide you to um, to put the impressions yes. on me. Yeah. You know, Pharrell and Chad and and Timberland yeah. mainly on that record, and I mean. I remember being, the funny thing is, I remember being in NSYNC and, you know, or right before and Super Duper Fly came out. And I was, you know, I'm walking around, you know, you know, BFE, Tennessee, Mm -hmm. you know, small town USA going like, you guys don't understand, it's the future of music. You know, this is unbelievable. You know, and that was, you know, uh, Midnight Marauder was very important for me. That that syncopation really it uh, it always stuck with me, and uh, I mean at the same time too you're trying to figure out who you are. So like I was, you know you mentioned Dave earlier. Like I've like literally pushed my way onto singing just some la la las on the Foo Fighters record because I had this whole, and this is after the whiskey again when I got brave enough, but like told him how important Nirvana was for me because mm-hmm. I was so young and like you know just that attitude y- y- you know that that oh like everything everyone's telling you may not be right mm. but so 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 yeah like it, it came full circle because you know you asked Pharrell who's the most important he'll tell you tribe mm. you know that that influenced him more than 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 anyone so mm. i don't know it was like this it, maybe there's just something across the bible belt you know the water across the bible belt because i just felt like these guys were you know i felt like a freshman in, in, in college looking up to these guys that had already, you know, graduated, yeah. you know, and I think that's the way I felt on the first album and and sort of discovering discovering really who I was as a songwriter as well, mm. you know, to collaborate with them in that way. Future Six, Love Sounds, Shedding Skin, you've grown somewhat, the confidence of success, taking a few more risks, in with Timberland, so you're wholesale super duper fly now. <laughs> right. So quickly again who are you how have you changed let's see i was still in between those two albums i was still very like sensitive about being reviewed <laughs> you know as i'm sure a lot of young people are yeah. um you know cuz you, you you kind of put your heart on your sleeve and and for the most part it went well but i but i was always i was kind of that person when i was younger that i would you know there could be for every 20 like this is bringing pop music into the future. There would be that one that's like, I don't get it. And I'd be like, what the f- yeah. man? So your skin gets a little tougher at that point. Well, well, you- well, I remember specifically that when I made, uh, when I finished Justified, I was like, wow, I, I really made an R&B album. Mm. Like I wanted to, I really mm. wanted to make an R&B album. Like this is everything I grew up loving that I feel like I can uh, put in my pocket and, 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 and make something new out of it. Mm-hmm. Um, using all my influences and then every review was like pop album, pop album, pop album. And I was like, it really did put in my brain, well, I guess if I'm always going to be looked at as a pop artist more than anything, like, what does that mean? Like, and, and, and the, so I, I think I, I, you know, in the midst of doing a tour 
and kind of rethinking how I would do it again, um, that hypothesis kept, you know, circling around my brain. And if I'm gonna be a pop star, let me subvert it even more. That's well, I, I just feel like, well, let me do whatever the f I exactly. want. I'm gonna do whatever I want. And at the time, you know, Tim and I just clicked even more and we were talking about new wave, you know, sonics. And then we started getting into, I wonder how we could redefine, you know, I wonder how we could redefine dance music. Also, like, I just want to be very clear that that record came out in 2006 and Tim very specifically said, let me see what you're twerking with. So I don't want to hear about this twerk movement anymore right. that happened years, half a decade later. No, right. I'm, I'm half kidding only because I like to take up for him, but... I'm half kidding. Yeah. Put that in your pipe oh, and smoke it. Yeah. Right. 2020, parts one and two, <laughs> shedding skin, and then pause. You become a dad. That's really why you took the time, right? Spend some time with your son. Yeah, I've, ne I've never felt more inept in my life. Right. Like you wake up and all of a sudden there's this human being you're responsible for. And right. I still, I mean, yeah. you know, he, he'll, it's exhilarating he'll and beautiful be three and very and... soon. And, and you talked about your 11 year old. My three year old's already running our house. It's like. Yeah. So you, you're, with your, you're with your family. You, do, you take the necessary time off. That's the smart move, life first. And then man of the woods. This album, dude, start to finish, I feel like you've shed enough skin. This is the closest I feel that we get to you as a person. I would agree with that for sure. I mean, it's it's definitely the most introspective record I've made. Mm -hmm. I think every I think every album that I've done before that was about aspiration and like how can I pay homage to my influences while you know, like, oh, suit and tie, like, it, yeah, it's not about expensive taste, but it is about class. Wouldn't you, like, why not aspire to that? And also there's an element of like, who am I gonna be on each record, as opposed to who am I right now? Exactly. Right? So So I talk about I talk about everything before Man of the Woods is aspiration, and then Man of the Woods really is inspiration. I because you look in, you sort of, you know, when you have kids, all of a sudden you're, you're faced with your ch own childhood, and mm -hmm. good and bad, and, and, you know, am I gonna completely mess this kid up? I feel like the success of parenthood is feeling like uh, I failed all day today, but I get to wake up tomorrow and do it again. <laughs> you know, like, and, and hopefully they turn out to be a, a good human being. Pharrell, I texted Pharrell last night. I said, I'm gonna talk to Justin tomorrow. He's like, it's gonna be a good one. I was like, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> okay. And uh, I said to him, you know, can you give me just a little something? So then he went away and it was like about an hour and I was like, well, you know, that's what that what that's called is the showbiz no, which is just like, yeah, yeah, I don't want to say no. So the, I go quiet. The non-response response. The non-response response is the most respectful <laughs> response, right? So I was like, he's given me the no, yeah, but then he came back and he said, uh, Justin is at a place in life where he realizes anything he does has to have meaning, which I think is a beautiful quote. What does that mean to you? I mean, I would agree with that for sure. It, it, you know, the funny thing is like this sound that that ended up on this album came out of like two years of conversations with Pharrell talking about sound and talking about like, no, there, there, there's this real estate, there's this sonic real estate that's so available. Mm. And he kept pushing me and pushing me to say, uh, no, but you're the guy that has to do it because you're from there. You know, you're from the South. You can you can put like a positive thing out there about the South and we can do it with the sound. And I know, like I can hear it. He kept telling me I can hear it. And when Pharrell says that, you never fight against that, right? So he visualized it. He knew what it was gonna sound like to some degree. He, he had, I, I, think, I think he had an inkling, mm. you know? And, but, but I also know that while we were making it, we both looked at each other and, and he even said to me, he's like, I didn't know it was this. We really delved in deep sonically. Like it has a really, it really, I feel like it has a really deep sound to it, but but just to back just to backtrack a little bit, he kept talking to me about it and talking to me about it. And I was like, I hear you. And and you know, within that time, that's you know, that's when we had Silas. Jess and I had Silas and and um that's when things became, you know, it's like it that's literally like when you hear the record scratch, it's you know what I mean? And life just like turns into another thing. And everybody tells you that, oh, your life's gonna change. You're like, yeah, whatever. 
I got it. My wife and I look at each other when we have a, you know, a night off and we get him to bed and we, we sit down and just like watch a movie or something and we're like, what did we do before this? <laughs> did we go out to dinner? Like, were, this, were we at a bar? Yeah. I don't, like, what did we do before this? Yeah, it's true. It's true. But but it, it really started to to take, uh, it really started to, to, to take flight when we we said, to, uh, you know, I, I had gotten to a place where, you know, I was, we had had Silas, we had been at home, I took like, we took like six months and I didn't do anything. And then we started having real conversations, yay, when next year comes around, let's get together mm -hmm. and... You're talking to Pharrell at this point? Yes. You hadn't worked with Neptunes on a project of yours since Justified. That's true. I mean, it's, it's the most obvious question I'm probably going to ask today, but why? Um... You want the showbiz answer? No, I want the real answer. Okay. Um, uh, we, I, I was, I was not able to work with Pharrell out of a, um, and and I got to say this the right way because I don't want to blame anybody for anything, but it did change the course of things for a minute. Mm -hmm. um, uh, everyone remembers Clips. Mm -hmm. Clips was signed to Jive Records, which mm -hmm. I was signed to. Um, I don't know what went on with their deal, but I do remember that Pharrell was very adamant about getting them out of the deal. So it became, uh, from my understanding, you know, it became challenging for him to work with any Jive artist at that point. <sighs> if I'm being totally honest about it, I was extremely hurt being caught up in the middle of it. But at the same time, I had, listen, I had had, a, load of money stolen, you know, from me by somebody else when I was in the group. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd already gone through, like, legal troubles, and I kind of felt like, you know what, I'm at this point where I feel like I have so much ahead of me, I don't, I just don't want the, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in the middle of the record label and somebody that, you know, I consider a friend, and so I feel like I kind of just removed myself from the situation. Yeah. It seems very important to the sound of the record that Chad was involved in it was a Neptune's production, not a Pharrell production. Yes, because there's a there is a fundamental difference. Yes, <laughs> I think that I think that well, we had those conversations about it, and I think as a just as a, you know a fan of the history, mm. you know the legacy, it was. But can we also get Chad in? And then you know we had two more conversations and. It was like that thing where he didn't hit you back for an hour. It was like it was like two two more conversations, and he was like, "And yeah, I'm gonna bring Chad, and we're gonna oh, he was we're gonna do the thing." No, he wasn't exasperated. He was just like emphatic about like, "Yeah, right. we're gonna do this Good. this way." Did you put any idea back together then? Because was there even talk about them? Doing no, I, that's 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 them being that's them being them, right. which I'm a big fan of. It it all worked out in a way where we 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 just got back together. Pharrell and I, and and then obviously Chad, you know, came in as well, um, but a lot of discussion. And then <clears throat> we were talking about where do we start? Where do we start? And, and we were talking about parenthood and he said, he said, what's your son's name? And, and, and I said, Silas, you know, I named him after my grandfather and my great grandfather who those guys were, you know, the uh, my grandfather was 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 pretty much. I mean, my parents divorced when I was young. So my grandfather was very much a father figure to me, but obviously from two generations removed, you know, like just tough as nails. And like, I don't need to go to the doctor. <laughs> They're like, yeah. I'm like, <clears throat> and I'm like, I need my ENT. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah. uh, I guess in my defense, this is my 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 uh, livelihood. But but. Um, he said to me, he said, what does, what does your son's name mean? And I was like, you know, I've never, I don't know. And I literally just went on Google, like meaning of the name Silas. And it sent me to this, to this site. And it said, of Latin origin, meaning man of the woods. And there it is. And, and I said, it means man of the woods. <sighs> And I was like, how serendipitous that my last name is Timberlake. Like, what does that mean? And like, <laughs> we were having all these discussions yeah. and he goes, man, you know what? That's a, that's a really, really good name for a song. And I was like, that's a really good name for an album. You know, and we, literally Man of the Woods, the title track was the first song we wrote 
for this album. And that, like, the whole thing just took flight from there, hmm. you know, because for him to put something that felt so urban, but, like, to put these, like, you know, what feels like, like a slide guitar on it, you know, to move like that, it just feels really Southern. Let me put it this way. It, 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 and Pharrell said this to me as well, like, no, 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 you just didn't know you could dance to the mountains, but you can, <laughs> you know, if you put it in the right context. Filthy's a banger. I said that to you. I reached out to you before we had a chat and just was like, man, the first time I heard yeah, that, I loved all that. the kind of live, you know, but then when the bass line comes in, it's like, all right, you know, we're slinking in. It's a palate cleanser. It's kind of almost a little bit of diversion tactic. It's like a depth charge in the water, I think, a little bit, which I like. It is disruptive, which I think when we started looking at all the songs, it was like, I mean, why not? You know, like, let's just kick everybody in the balls right now. Yeah, what you did. So as well as being an uncredited uh, uh, actor on one of the greatest films of all time, Popstar, uh, Never Stop Stopping, which I, I can't believe you're uncredited. It's the biggest mistake you've ever made in your career. Uh, you also held off uh, from crediting your wife vocally at the end of the song. And a lot of people started to talk about, is that, Je is that Jessica mm -hmm. on the end of the song? Well, the answer is obviously. Yes. Yes. I mean, you say that as your wife. Yes. So yes is the answer, and it, it begins. A th it begins a theme throughout the record. Like so. Before we talk specifically about those, because I want to go through the album. She is credited on the album so as gets, as my son. Does she get points? As well as my son. Does she get points. She gets all the points, bro. <laughs> Are you married? That's Do you right know answer. how this yes, works? That's the right answer. That's the right <laughs> answer. He's got all my publishing. <laughs> <laughs> yep, that's true. All fade is up. Um, did was she into it or did you have to like how did that no nah, she was into it I, it started off as there's a very specific interlude that is all hers where i just created a bed of music for her to speak over which becomes the intro for song flannel flannel yeah and i felt like in the when i start see, started sequencing the album i felt like you're right, Filthy comes in and it's just like, it's like it's like trying to get through the first 30 seconds of a round with Mike Tyson at his peak. You know, like if you, there's like a compilation on, on YouTube of, of just Mike Tyson knocking people out in eight seconds. Yeah. And so I knew that that was that sort of like kick in the pants, like I said. So I felt like immediately I wanted to cleanse the palate and then take you directly into where you going? The forest. Yeah, where you going? Take you exactly. take you outside. Yeah, yeah. You know, and and so so I felt like I needed a, a like a voice of consciousness. And did she write and, her parts, or did you do it together? Like, how did that happen? Um, I wrote them for her for the most part. Um, and and funny enough, she just did them on voice note for me. I got her to just like I would say something to her, and you know, it wasn't like line readings, but yeah. but she would just sort of repeat them in her own way. And, and I said, I almost want you to be like, I almost want you to feel like you're the ghost it's of- a, It's very theoretical. Yeah, you're, you're a presence. You're not an actual person, you know, but we're following you, you know, and, and it's almost, you can be a little playful with it. We tried it a bunch of different ways, right? Mm, mm, mm. Um, and then I got this idea on, I was, I was on the way to studio to mix flannel and and I got this idea, I was like, wow, this could be really interesting. And I called her and I said, I want you to have a conversation like you're talking to your best girlfriend because uh, she's notorious for like taking my vintage t-shirts and my jackets right. and my, you know, anything she likes. She was like, can I wear this, you know, to, to dinner tonight? <laughs> and then it, I don't see it ever again. Um, and, and so I, you know, there was, there, I remember that we had had a conversation. She's like, I don't know, I like, you know, I like wearing your shirts. I feel like, where's this been? You know, like it's a piece of you, you know, that I can always have. And, you know, when you travel away, because, you know, traveling so much, we didn't have a family at that point. We were just a married couple. Mm. And she's like, when you travel and I have to work, like, it's nice to have your t-shirt or your, you know, your flannel shirt. And and so it was a, it became a great idea for, for a song. Uh, what is the most frustrating thing? What do you know frustrates your wife most of all about Me? yourself? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah. we don't have a, enough time to tell you all the things <laughs> that I'm sure frustrates her about me. Um, I can tell you one small thing that, I, I, that just popped up in my mind that definitely uh, gets on her nerves. Okay. Uh, about me is that she'll ask me a question and I'll be processing the answer to it, but it really comes across like I did not pay attention to anything she just said. <laughs> right. 
she's like, did you hear what I said? Yes, I heard. I'm still reserving my yes or no. <laughs> right. I'm not sure. Yeah. Um, I mean, I'm getting frustrated. You just tell me about that. <laughs> Parent talk. Is that the plan? More? I mean, I want to have as many as, as we can, if I'm being honest. Mm -hmm. um, Check out to Tennessee. I don't know if I'll ever be done. Mm -hmm. You know, I just know that I won't always be, um, won't always be young and, and, and so yeah, I mean, I always want to write music. I always want to make movies. I always want to go on tour. I don't know how long my body will let me do it. You know, I'm, I, I've, I've realized that for the first time in my life, you know? In preparation for this tour? Yeah, it hurts. <laughs> like getting older hurts. Yeah. Um, so so yeah. Should have made uh, sexy back a little slower, buddy. I know, right? Well, there's always Bum. time. Bum. Bum. <laughs> there's always time. Yeah. How's the tour prep going? Yeah. Uh, good. Good so far. I mean, far. you jumped I mean, in, man. I mean, I th nowadays people put a record out, let it chill, get their act together. Take, you know, you were you were announcing. Well, the that's what prep. I always did, but I felt like. Th there was something about a lot of the music that even though we've talked about how wide-ranging it can be, I feel like it was really immediate, and I've never done it this way. Mm -hmm. You know, I've never, like, put a record out and just ready to go um, within two months. I usually, I usually, uh, you know, it's like a couple singles, album, tour, you know, yeah. becomes like a six-month process, yeah. but I don't know. I, I felt like there was there was so much I wanted to to put out before the album came out that um, it, it then it begged the question like how fast can we get out and play these songs live and like feel the immediacy of mm. of it and is it th it's obviously thematically connected to the record so we can expect that kind of yeah combination but it'll of also modern and out, and outdoor. yeah it'll also touch on I mean I'm you know it'll touch on uh, you know past hits as well you know and we'll we'll completely that's the beauty of 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 a show is you can you know you can just keep changing colors yeah yeah at you know at the snap of of of, of a finger and and but i yeah I, the the whole idea that like we could use modern technology to make you feel in some shape or form like to heighten your senses to make you feel like you're outdoors mm -hmm. i mean you'll know you're not you know, it's like, but but to the whole play on that, it really it 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 um it it's just a it's just a visual um sort of um, realization of of what I feel like we've we've created sonically. Would you do Vegas one day? Would would you ever consider it? I mean, there's more people doing it, right? I mean, I wouldn't rule it out if it was something that was different. I definitely don't, you know. <laughs> I immediately am like it. It like it, it, it feels like the. It feels like uh, uh, you're planning option? your. You're planning your retirement. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean. So, so for some reason that feels like scary to and me. And understandably so. The, the the person who did Vegas better than anybody was Prince. You know, like he was like, yeah, I'll just show up when I show up, and I'll play like ten shows a year, and 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 it'll be it'll be me because I'm the greatest ever that ever did it. Well, what's what's your favorite Prince story? <laughs> I can't say it. Oh, I can't man. say it. Come um, on. Yeah, it involves too much profanity uh, okay. that he was not a fan of. What the um, for for somebody like him, like any time that I got like the nod of like I really like I really like your new record, I was like, you've heard it, you know? You just yeah. feel like like Prince is so dope. He should only listen to him, <laughs> you know? Like, and, and so much. And, and 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 so. Um, I, I just, I, I'm not even listening to you right them. now. I'm just wishing you could tell me that other story. I'll tell you after. <laughs> okay. I'll tell you after. Um, <laughs> as if it's not, you know, enough for you to be out there in rehearsal, trying to prepare for the release of a record, making music videos, <laughs> making sure this album goes, getting your tour together, yeah. rehearsing. You've it's also football game. landed the big fish <laughs> now. This is, I mean, this is borderline psychotic. You're doing this at this time, but yeah. fair play to you for doing it. Um, so, so, okay. Third time. But the, you're returning after the last time, and when you announced, it brought up the last time for a lot of people again. And that naturally, I mean, that's something you, you that we talked about. Yeah, I bet. So, what was the conversation? I wasn't, to be honest, it's like it wasn't too much of a conversation. Um, 
it's just one of those things where you go like, yeah, we're not gonna, what do you want me to say? Like, we're not gonna do that again. <laughs> you know, like, yeah, that's just so crazy. That is the world's biggest stage, man. And like, mm -hmm. to come off that stage back then and, and, and realize that like, everything had, was supposed to go to plan and now the whole thing is something completely different to the rest of the performance must have been like, one of those moments as, a, as an artist and a human being uh, where you're yeah, like, I mean, how, do I, how do I roll through this? Uh, yeah, I, and, and I, I stumbled through it, you know, to be quite honest, like I had my wires crossed and it's just something that you, you have to look back on and go like, okay, well, you, you know, you can't change what's happened, but you know, you can you can move forward and learn from it. And, and you and, and you and Janet took took some time to do that after the fact and kind of resolve the situation and like we're able to make peace of the whole thing. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I, and I'm not sure that the, I don't know that a lot of people know that. I mean, I don't think it's my job to 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 do that because you you value the relationships that you do have with Absolutely, people. Absolutely, 100%. Is that still a line you have to walk for yourself? To, do you have to challenge yourself to not get caught up in stress and not feel the burden of fame? Fame is not a burden to me. You know, I really do believe it's a lie. Mm. You know, it's not, it doesn't, it, it's not something that, that is tangible. Mm, mm. You can't ever hold on to it. It doesn't matter. You know, stress is a real thing. Yeah, man, for real. It is cruel, oh, yeah. you know? So yeah, stress, Hello. stress, I, I still have trouble with. Mm -hmm. I can be very stressed out sometimes, a lot of the time, if I'm <laughs> most of the time. <laughs> um, I can be extremely obsessive, especially, especially when it comes to, um, uh, especially when it comes to music specifically. I think music actually lends itself to the compulsive mind. I think the idea of focusing sure. on one thing for a long period of time is what offsets that compulsion. It's actually probably the medicine, the medicine, the artistic side of the brain. No question. Yeah. No question. Um, I, I think I think the only thing that, that really helps me through it is I've adopted this, this uh, I've adopted the possibility of anything. Do you feel being a father, I'm sure there are times, I know that every parent I'm sure at times feels desperately uncertain about the world that we're bringing our children up in. Yeah, for sure. And I wonder what you believe the identity of America should be or is or how you feel about it right now. I, I, I wrestle, I mean, it's where I say something came from. Mm -hmm. I wrestle with a lot of it, uh, um, a lot of the time. Do you feel it deeply? Uh, I do. I do. I think that, um, I think it's going to require um, a sort a real steadfast patience. Um, and, uh, but I do, I, I, I heard someone say this the other day and, and I do agree with it. Like the idea and the ideals of America being the land of opportunity and the realization right now with um, what it is, not what our idea of it, what we want it to be, is they're just there. I think we're realizing that they're just so much further apart than, than we could have even imagined. And, uh, it's it, it's tough because you can't just like you can't just do one thing, you know, and 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 it change everything. It's just gonna take a lot of it's gonna take a lot of really good, uh, steadfast, patient minds and hearts to come together, and 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 it's funny I don't. I don't even look at it as this side and this side. Like there's so many sides. I think also too, like our access to information has sort of, you know, it's it's hard sometimes. It can be confusing about what to sort of believe in, not not let alone what to believe. I want to talk about this song called Supplies. Um, this is a swerve, produced by Neptunes. Interesting track, melodically very southern, very country. Beat a, lot, a lot, of, a lot of the close knit circles, favorite. Yeah, beat wise, very heavy. Uh, true story, elements of a true story. Yeah, there, there were elements of of a true story. I mean, that you know, for the sake of the song, you know, heightened and flipped and 
like you said, swerved, but but yeah, it came from a from a place. Um, and yeah, man, that I mean, what's it about? Without giving away the story too much, I mean, protect it, but give us an idea as to what you want to get the cost in the song. You know, I mean, the visual for the video, which have you uh, made a video for every song? Well, I've made a video for four of them so far. All right. um, the video for that song will be a bit of a statement, um, and I'll let people sort of, mm -hmm. you know, interpret it the way they want to. But um, it, it it definitely started off as, I mean, just the the simple idea of the song is like, if the world ends, I got you. If it all comes crashing down, I got your back. Yeah, and it started off with it started off with the bass and the and the drums, so it had the. It definitely was, you know, it had that modern tempo. Well, pop music has changed shape yeah. so dramatically since you were even released the last record. Absolutely. In the last two years, we're seeing the way pop music, and it's always been the most <clears throat> adaptable genre of music. It's always molding, absorbing, and swallowing, and regurgitating, and changing its shape. And, and if you think about, uh, uh, you know, who's around now, like, do you listen? Do you do you, do you have playlists? Do you listen to new music as it's coming out? Or you you know? Like, yeah, yeah. I mean, I still listen to everything. I still listen to everything. Who do you like? Who would you be listening to right now on a sort of modern level? Who's coming out? In pop That's music? new. Yeah. Travis is 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 a, is a, is, a, is a, I'm a big fan of him. Um, just Travis. No. Um, <laughs> just a play. <laughs> That's it. Travis just Scott. all Travis got. Uh, no, I, I really like Travis's stuff. Um, there, there's a definite sonic thing going on right now. Mm, mm. And that's what Supplies is to me. Supplies is like, a, that to me feels like, you know, swerving into that territory, but also bringing the theme of the record with you. Yeah, the, and the, the most record. important thing that Pharrell and I were conscious of when we were writing lyrics and melodies were that it was that it was very melodic. Yeah. 